Hello everyone and welcome to another Starbase video. We've talked about the devices in Starbase before, but there's been many new additions since then. So in this video, we'll take a look at some of the new ones. First of these is the Reconstruction Machine. A Reconstruction Machine is a device that you can use to reconstruct your endoskeleton if it has somehow been destroyed. Or in other words, it's used for respawning. You can add one to your spaceship or your station. The reconstruction machine consists of four different parts. The generator module, the fabricator module, the cradle module, and the terminal module. In order to use one, you need to link yourself to the specific reconstruction machine and make sure it's stocked up on endo kits. Endo kits can be bought from the marketplace and one will be consumed every time you use the machine. It can hold up to 30 endo kits at a time. It'll also consume a lot of energy to function, so make sure the device is powered up. However, there are some limitations to using it. There's a cooldown after every use of the machine until it recharges its batteries. In addition, you can only respawn into it if you die within 5 kilometers of the machine, and you can only be linked to one machine in a ship at a time. In the future, players will also be able to craft endo kits by looting spare parts from dead bodies, and the reconstruction machines will be able to be used to link multiple space stations with each other to allow teleporting between them. Then there's the 3D printers. The 3D printers can be used to automatically build ship or station blueprints for you. There are two different kinds, a small and a large one. This is what the small one looks like. As you can see, there's a slot for a fuel rod in it, which can be used to give it power. It also needs ore to build the blueprint, and if it's placed within your station like in this case, it'll automatically have access to the ore inside your station storage. If it's placed in a ship, it'll need to be connected to ore crates or be within your station's area. In order to use it, you also need a blueprint chip. Blueprint chips hold information on station or ship blueprints within them. In this case, we'll be using the blueprint of a small hall for a station lot. As you can see, I have plenty of materials in my station storage ready for this. So now we'll just need to insert the blueprint chip into the 3D printer. Then, using the universal tool, we can check its device fields to control it. The field called printer control is used to control the printer. Zero is off, one is on, and changing the value to minus one manually cancels an ongoing operation. Printer status shows the current state of the printer. Zero means it's idle, one means it's waiting for materials, two means it's printing, and 3 means it's waiting for the output of finished objects. The printer order amount field is used to select the number of times the full blueprint is printed. Changing this value to minus 1 repeats the printing indefinitely. Then, the current item field shows which item of the selected blueprint's index is currently being printed, while the blueprint item count shows the total number of items in the selected blueprint. The utility connection field is used to connect the printer to the station or the ship inventory for ore consumption as well as the placement of finished parts. Then there are the device fields for printing rate, working rate and their limits. Printing rate shows how fast the device is printing and it can be made faster by connecting multiple printers together like so. The working rate is related to how efficiently the printer is working and can be increased by adding a cooling system. Last but not least is the current item work remaining field, which shows how much work is still left for the specific item the printer is currently working on. So let's turn the printer on now. In order to monitor the process, there are slots on the printer where you can add buttons or progress bars like so. In this case, since we're printing a station blueprint, the finished parts will automatically start filling in the blueprint as it's working. There's also the bigger version of the 3D printer that looks like this, and it's a lot more efficient than the small one. The next device we'll be talking about is the transponder. The transponder is a device that transmits information to players. Here's what the device fields of the transponder that you can add to your ship look like. The first field is called transponder active, and its value can be changed from 1 to 0 if you want to turn the transponder off. 
Transponder owner shows who the ship the transponder was originally on is registered to, while transponder ship name shows the original ship's name, and these two fields cannot be changed. Thus, the transponder works sort of like a license plate that you can take off and attach to another ship to fool your friends or enemies if you wish. Inside Safe Zone displays whether or not the ship the transponder is on is inside a safe zone. In a similar manner, Player Damage field shows whether players can be damaged in the area, Ship Damage shows whether ships can be damaged, Collision Damage displays whether collisions damage ships, and Station Allowed tells us whether or not stations are allowed to be built in this area. You can use these pieces of information together with the in-game programming language YOLOL to, for example, have the devices in your ship react differently whether you're inside a safe zone or not. If the transponder is in your ship and it's on, it will transmit your player name to other players like this. If you've built your own station, a station transponder can broadcast the station's name as well. In the future, you'll also be able to choose who you want to be able to see your station's signal, such as only your friends or your company members. There have also been other additions to the Starbase devices list, such as new buttons and even plasma thrusters, and there are many other things to come as well. To stay up to date with the Starbase development, make sure to see our weekly progress reports on the Starbase forums and join our Discord server while you're at it.